So today we're going to talk about what it's like to raise chickens, specifically the number that we have, 85 chickens. So the first thing we've got to do is let them out. Maybe it's just me and mine where thunder has had its way. We are Jake and Becky, and we currently have 85 chickens. Every morning when we first get up, we come out, we open up the coop, turn off the electric fence, we fill up the feed bowls for the chickens, check on the water, and we let them out. Almost forgot to introduce you here. This is our rooster. It's our lavender Orpington rooster. We just named him Tin Man. Right now we have chickens divided into three areas. We've got our main flock over here that we have a coop and a large attached run to it. We have 16 chickens in here right now. They are some older laying hens and we just have them separated out so we can sell them. We've got 19 little chicks over here, pullets and cockerels that are in just in training. They're not laying yet. They're not big enough to be go with the main flock. So we put them in this separate pen to kind of give them a little more time to grow a little bit bigger until we put them in with the main flock. So why do we have 85 chickens? It's a good number we've settled on. We're still trying to get the number down a little bit. We started out with six chickens, then we increased it to 12. And our first year we weren't getting any eggs because you have to wait about five, six months until they start laying eggs. And so we kept adding chickens in uh, from different farms to get some egg layers. At the end of year one, we had about 30 chickens. Going into year two, we were really psyched about chickens. We loved everything about them, loved the different breeds, the different egg colors, and we increased that up to almost 100 middle to end of last year. And with our meat birds, we did raise birds for meat. We got that number up to about 125 at the maximum. And then this year, we started the year with about 100, and we've been able to decrease that down to about 85, and we're still looking to take that number down a little lower. Some of our favorite breeds are Americanas, because of the blue, eggs that they lay and they're just a gentle breed they're good breed we also like the olive eggers and they are a mixed breed between a americana and a well summer and we also like the moran eggs the dark brown eggs so you can see how vibrant all these colors are against each other throughout the day we'll usually come out we'll check on the chickens we'll gather the eggs just to make sure the nest boxes are clear Make sure everybody has water, plenty of food. And just check on their well-being during the day. A few times a day, we come outside and we'll refill their waters to make sure the ducks, the chickens, turkeys, they all have enough water to one, stay cool and to stay hydrated. So do we free range our animals? Yes, we do. They are in a protected area in the electric fence, but they are able to go anywhere within there. They're not restricted to um, a, just a dirt patch that we feed them just grain. They can get bugs, they can get grass, they can get all different kinds of weeds. And so they are, they're free range, they can go anywhere they want. So the fencing we use is a Premier One electric fencing made for poultry. Ah! Just kidding. That will keep the birds in and keep predators out. Of course, you can still have aerial predators, but with our rooster, they do a really good job of staying safe from any aerial predators during the day. With some of our smaller birds or some of our meat birds, we'll run them in chicken tractors. We have a video on how we made our John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractor and those tractors are great for keeping birds in an enclosed area especially when they're small in an enclosed area and also keeps them on a concentrated area of grass that we can move them to a new patch every day and they don't just eat over a whole area and kill all the grass they just get all the grass in one area and then we move them to a new patch each day. And this run is a great example of what happens when chickens are on a specific area because this used to be 
all grass. It was all part of the same field. We put these posts and fencing up. And if we move the chickens out from time to time, some grass will come back, but because especially this part is shaded, grass is not gonna come back in here. And that's one of the reasons we love rotating our chickens with the mobile electric fencing. This door right here used to be the main entrance and exit for the chickens. And we moved it to that side of the coop because the grass was all dead here. This was all totally dry, total dirt. And now it has all virtually come back to the way it was. So being able to move the chickens with a different door with this electric fencing allows us to move the chickens onto different grass, onto new areas, and so they don't ever beat up one area too bad. Enchanté. So let's talk pros and cons. What are the pros of having chickens? I love the fresh eggs. I love having fresh eggs every morning. Um, we have plenty, so we never really run out. And the fresh chicken, we butcher our own chicken, so that is amazing when you can actually taste um, the difference in your fresh chicken versus something you can get at the store. I'm just grab it. There's some breasts that don't have any. <laughs> Smile. Hello. Also, we just love taking care of animals. We love seeing them run around, just free range, and kind of do their own little thing in the yard. So I think that's kind of fun to just a chicken TV is what we call it. That's right. What about the cons? What do you dislike about having chickens? Getting up every morning to let the chickens out. You've got to get up and, and get them out every single morning. Yep, there's no vacation days with chickens. They, they've got to get out and, and eat and drink every day, just like we do. And then you've got to put them up in, at night or something will get them. So you got to make sure that you're very diligent on taking care of them. Another con would be them tearing up the yard. They like to dust bath, and so they put little holes in the yard and they, they get all this dirt and they kind of make a mess of stuff. Can't let them out in the yard if you want a nice manicured yard. They also like to scratch, and so if they get in your garden, your flowers, they're gonna just tear them all up. How'd you get back over here? This white chicken. This is a white chicken right here. Is this here. your favorite chicken? Yeah. Why do you like this chicken? It's the glow in the dark chicken. Glow in the dark chicken? Yeah. This is our blue old English bantam. It's gonna be a very small bird. We, it's looking like a rooster right now. He'll be our smallest chicken on the farm. You right, caught himself a black silky. You like these silkies, don't you? I can't <laughs> what breed is this, Eli? A barred rock. This is Eli's favorite breed, the barred rock. Why do you like the barred rocks? Because it has white stripes and black stripes. Black and white stripes, that's right. This is a silver lace wine dot. This is one of our new unique looking birds, the Lackenbelder. So let's talk about cost, the cost of raising chickens. That's often a deal breaker for a lot of people is that they're not free that it takes time and money to produce the eggs and meat and the entertainment that chickens provide. So of course, every day we've got to feed our chickens. We get the majority of our feed in Kansas City at a place called Valley Feed, and they have some really good stuff there, but it's about an hour away from us. So when we go, we'll grab 10 or 12 50 pound bags of food. But the problem with that is that you've got to be able to store it because otherwise you have mice that will get into your feed. So each time we do a food run, it will cost somewhere between 150 and 200 bucks. Uh, and that'll be for about three or four weeks of food for all of our birds. And I calculated out the amount it costs us to feed our chickens every morning. A bucket of feed that we bring out to them costs about $2.20 to bring out to them. We also supplement their feed by feeding them food scraps from the kitchen and they get grass and bugs from the yard. So if we calculate out the cost of feed, to produce an egg every day. Here in the summer where we're getting the most amount of eggs and having to give them the least amount of feed because there's more grass and bugs for them to eat from. So it costs about 10 cents to produce an egg in the middle of summer. But that doesn't calculate in the cost of labor, us spending time coming out to feed and water them, to take care of them, infrastructure, building the chicken tractors, the cost of electric fencing. But in the winter, the egg production goes way down. 
There were some days this last winter when we got five eggs, when we got two eggs, some days even no eggs at all because of how cold it was and the chickens were having to stay inside all day. And with feed, we were giving them twice as much feed because there was no grass on the ground outside. So then our cost was totally flipped and we were making little to no money off the birds or they were even costing us money. So we've got to make as much money as possible off them in the summer to offset the costs in the winter. We put the chickens up each night, making sure they're all locked up into a coop or their mobile tractor. And when everybody goes in for the night, we can get them all locked up. As we're closing up the coops, we just go around and collect the eggs. In this coop, we do have 50 birds. So you can tell the majority of them will roost on these three bars. There's probably about 30, 35 of them there. And then we just have a few of them that pick a few other spots around the coop. So this coop is perfect size for the 50 birds that are in here. It could probably do pretty well up to about 100, and then it would start getting pretty cramped in here. I'm collecting eggs. So we talked about it at the beginning, but why 85 chickens? Why not 30 chickens? Why not 10 chickens? We could probably produce enough eggs with a dozen chickens potentially to feed our family. Or why not 200 chickens? Why do we have 85 chickens? We like to have a variety of breeds. And so we got, um, we were just going to the store or going to a hatchery and getting different chicks and making sure that we got a variety of different breeds for different colors of eggs. And it kind of got to where, where we just had that many. And we'd like to have enough eggs for ourselves, but also to serve the community and to offset some of the cost of the feed. So is it worth it? Is it worth all of the work, cleaning up after them, feeding them, collecting the eggs, processing the birds, doing all the dirty work, buying all of the feed and equipment and building shelters and tractors, is it worth all of the effort to raise chickens? Yes, it's been a dream of ours, it's been a dream of mine to have lots of animals on our farm and chickens have been a great um, start to that. It's taught us what we need to do, how to take care of animals before we get a bunch of different kind of animals. Chickens have been a good start to that. I know we'll always have some chickens even if we downsize just a little bit more, but they are part of our family. We all enjoy them, so we'll always have our chickens.